You've probably heard about Le Corbusier, the father of modern architecture. In this video, I wanted to share my modeling process for Villa Savoie, one of the most iconic buildings of the 20th century and the basis for the five points of modern architecture. Stay until the end to see my modeling tips and tricks. We are starting with three base plans in a runner file and a reference image. I have divided the layers into two big groups called 2D and 3D. This way we keep all the lines in one pile and all the 3D geometry in the other pile. So we can hide and toggle through those groups when needed. First, I started with the ground area. I created the foundation and then isolated only the ground floor so I can focus on it. I started by selecting only the columns 2D layer and then extruded those curves. But I made a small mistake here because my walls layer was already selected. So I just took all the geometry and put it back to the appropriate 3D columns layer. The next step was to create the glass panels in front of the entrance and here I used a very interesting command called array curve which allowed me to pick a small rectangle that I created earlier and populate it on my curve based on a given distance. Once the command was executed all I had to do is take the distributed rectangles, extrude them and put them in the correct layer. The same technique was used for the opposite side. Then I used the offset command to bring the curve a bit inward and offset it again to create the thickness of our glass. And here I had to extend these curves a bit so that I can use the curve boolean command and create a closed polyline which was then extruded in 3D. Again, the same principle was used for the other side. That's when I decided to play around with adding more details like this bottom piece and then adding the middle piece as well. Here, I was duplicating the same glass geometry and using scale 1D to change its height and position it correctly. After that, I just repeated the same process for the other side and also for the entrance door. Walls are next. Everything is pretty straightforward here. Select the walls layer and use extrude curve to get the walls to the proper height. And here I didn't like dark blue color of the glass layer so I slightly modified it. After this, I created a rectangle over the area where the windows are supposed to be and simply used set point to position those rectangles at the bottom and extruded them to the proper height. After that, I copied them in place and positioned them at the top as well. This created a void in the wall for all windows. And of course, I used the same procedure for all facade voids by either copying these elements and modifying them in their new place. Creating a window was an interesting task. Most of the time I use this approach. First, I select the edge of the wall and extrude it to get a flat surface and execute the duplicate border command, which gives me the close curve of that flat surface. Choose the surface offset distance and direction and then we get an inner closed curve. Once we take both closed curves we can use planar surface command to get a surface from those two and that's how the window frame is created. I use the initial flat surface for the glass thickness and then I simply position these two elements in the middle of the window frame and put them to their corresponding 3D layer. Before we continue, I want to let you know that if you're interested, you can watch a complete three hour video of me modeling Villa Savoy in real time. This is available on our Patreon page and you'll be able to download the project files as well. You can access the Patreon page by clicking on the link in the description below. I used the same technique to create a door, but here the main difference was that I needed the frame with three sides instead of four. So I had to slightly modify the inner curve, explode it and connect it to the border curve. When you have an open curve that you need to connect, a very cool trick that you can use is a command called close curve. It will just connect the two ends of a curve and you'll be left with the close curve which I used to create a door frame in this example. Now comes the tricky part. I made a big mistake here, so be careful. When I was creating the ramp and the stairs, I didn't have the proper section drawing, so I miscalculated the slab thickness. This meant that I had to modify both the ramp and the stairs later on when I realized that the height is not correct and I spent the most time creating this area. Okay, one more time. I guess it was just a bad luck. Anyways, I created the ramp surfaces from curves and then I was checking the reference photos back and forth to see how the wall in the middle was created. I did a lot of boolean split cuts here to get a final handrail geometry. And lastly, I created the wall below the ramp landing that was missing and also a small triangular part of the wall that was following the ramp angle. Creating stairs took me the longest time because this is the only geometry that was a bit curvy and tricky to create. At the start, I used curve boolean to get close polylines for my steps and then I positioned them to their proper heights. Or at least I thought they were correct 
and I had to do this all over again later on when I realized that I missed the floor height. Then I extruded the stair risers and started working on the sides. The most interesting part here is how I created a curve on the curved surface that matched the heights of the stairs. First I positioned the points to the other edges of each step and then I used a command called curve through points which connected those points and it kept the curvy shape. After that I just connected the curved line with the straight lines, positioned it a bit below and copied the same line to around 1 meter so that we can use it for the hand railing as well. Then I used the command pull to position those lines directly on the surface behind it so we can use split command to get our desired surface. I used exactly the same procedure to create the inner side of the stairs and lastly I used offset surface to get final hand railing poly surface. When it comes to the first floor, I followed the same principle for creating the walls, doors and windows and surely the most exciting part to model on this floor was the two outside glass walls around the ramp that is leading to the rooftop. These parts were interesting to model because they had a lot of these small steel frames just like the ones we had at the entrance of the building on the ground floor. So for the smaller segments, I used a similar approach like we used for the windows starting with offset curve on surface and then I drew the other lines on the surface, extended them enough and created a single surface by using one and only curve boolean. After that, it was just a matter of giving that surface a thickness and creating the glass itself. However, for the bigger outside glass wall, I didn't want to do the same manual method. Instead, I just drew the single lines which would present the divisional lines and then we created a special definition in Grasshopper which requires a single closed border polyline and inner lines that are supposed to be offset. And then you just watch the magic happen. We got the surface and we could also control its thickness. If you're interested in checking out this definition, you can get it on our Patreon page, by the way. After I positioned the newly created frames, I just had to create the glass thickness and that was it. We have the complete frames with the glass in between. After that, I started playing with the upper handrail for the ramp since it had a bit more details than the lower ramp handrail. I simply took the ramp edge, duplicated it above and divided the height into a couple of segments where the steel pipes would be positioned. Then I created a vertical hand post and used fillet to make it a bit smoother just like in the real world. Then I tested the thickness by using the pipe command and also created some vertical divisions as well. In the end, I just selected the inner lines and gave it a bit smaller thickness than the outer pipe and that's how we finished the handrail in this area. Creating the rooftop level was quite basic, but the last thing that I would like to point out here is the way I created additional window frames. First I checked the reference images and decided to divide the curve into 5 segments, but the middle 3 segments were 1.2 meters in length. Then I just centered those middle segments and I got the position for my vertical window frames. After that, I grouped the whole window together with the newly created frames and copied this on all existing window locations. In some cases for longer windows, I used the command remove from group and just selected the new vertical frames and positioned them along the long window so that the glass division makes sense at the end. If you're an architect and you're looking to quickly learn run and grasshopper, we have a completely free training on our website that's going to help you discover and learn the core principles of Rhino, the basic logic behind Grasshopper, and you'll find out what these tools are capable of in architecture. Go check it out, the link is in the description.